I think it's common knowledge when I say that Apex Legends has made a lot of money since its release, with EA reporting a staggering $2 billion as of March 2022. So I'd say that Respawn and EA have more than made up for their investments since committing to a free-to-play live service model with Apex Legends now making up a significant portion of their total revenue. So there is no doubt that they will continue to support the game for a very long time. But this situation does bring up an interesting question. With all that's been said and done, would Titanfall 3 be a profitable investment for both Respawn and EA? I intend to answer that very question right here. But before I do, we need to first develop a better understanding of what kind of direction Apex Legends is heading in. As of recently, there were leaks that revealed plans to update the game as late as Season 23, and according to these leaks, we could be seeing Titanfall-like mechanics and maps be introduced to the genre-defining battle royale. Does this mean Apex Legends will be replacing Titanfall altogether? I seriously doubt Respawn would scrap the Titanfall IP, so no. We don't even know if these leaks are reliable or not, and besides, Season 23 is quite some time away. But at the very least, these leaks do suggest that Respawn doesn't intend to quit work on Apex, and I mean, why would they? As long as people continue to show interest in Apex Legends, it will continue to make money, so from a business point of view, it makes perfect sense why Respawn would want to continue to update the game. Now that that's out of the way with, we need to talk about something else now. The problems with the live servers. Now, can Apex Legends be supported indefinitely? It is possible, and it probably will. That is the point of a live service after all, to keep profiting off of a single game instead of devoting resources to an entirely new one. But does this mean companies can't make money off of anything else? Absolutely not. In fact, a game that is constantly making money for you in the background makes branching out into newer titles much easier. In Respawn's case, they have done very well with the release of Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, selling well over 20 million copies in its first year alone, with a sequel confirmed to release in March next year. So even though Apex was proving to be a very profitable project, Respawn still published Jedi Fallen Order and it was a massive success, both critically and financially. And it was able to do so without being a live service. With this information in mind, let's cast our attention back to Apex Legends and start to analyse the problems with the live service game. Whilst it is true the game will continue to release new seasons, new legends and new events, in the end the experience is still the same. Players will still be playing the same game two years from now, and unless there are some sweeping changes to be made, eventually it will be harder and harder for people to remain interested. This is simply because the novelty will finally start to wear off. Apex Legends was innovative when it first came out, changing the battle royale genre forever, but it's been nearly three years now, and we are seeing more and more companies releasing their own takes on battle royales and following this same live service trend, to the point where people are just getting sick of seeing it. The gaming market is becoming oversaturated in this cesspool of battle royales and live service games, and it's finally wearing off on us. Player fatigue is setting in, and from the looks of things, Apex Legends isn't really doing anything to keep the experience fresh. We can see the player count slowly going down already, and this will probably continue for a while. I'm not saying Apex Legends doesn't have a hardcore fanbase, it does, but in the near future, Respawn might come to realise that Apex Legends won't be as profitable as it once was. But Respawn has bigger problems when it comes to Apex Legends. When a live service game can potentially run for upwards of 10 years or more, it puts a lot of strain on developers and publishers. Because much like the players, the devs will face their own form of fatigue, with staff wanting to leave the development cycle of Apex Legends to move on to more ambitious projects. In the past year alone, Apex's game director and Respawn co-founder left, alongside Apex's narrative director, design director and lead concept artist. This is all evidence suggesting that developers do not want to work on a live service game forever, despite the massive financial gain. As these more experienced devs leave, newer ones will come to fill the void, and this cycle will continue for the entire lifespan of the game. But as this happens, as these roles start to shift, Apex Legends will begin to reflect upon the new leadership changes happening within Respawn, and this very often leads to creative ideas clashing and backlash from the community. Not always, but the evidence does suggest that more often than not, this is true. Now there are more issues that I could go into, like monetization practices, rampant bugs and glitches, or the constant wait for updates, but that's all stuff for another video. 
Whilst live service games are a relatively cheap and affordable way to maintain a constant stream of revenue for companies, this does not mean that they have to devote all of their resources to it because, as mentioned before, there are a lot of problems that begin to arise for both the players and developers. Eventually, it will become harder and harder to support the game as studio heads change, and if Respawn were to continue to devote all of their resources to this one title, it would just be unreasonable considering they are constantly recruiting new employees. As of 2019, the size of Respawn more than doubled and they can't all work on the same game, so branching out to work on newer projects is the natural way to go, whilst Apex Legends remains a constant and reliable source of income. I would imagine that in the future, Respawn will hire new developers to continue work on Apex Legends, that way those with more experience would finally have a chance to work on more ambitious and demanding projects. And so we arrive back at my original question. With all of this new information in mind, would Titanfall 3 be a worthwhile investment for Respawn and EA? Well, my short answer is yes. Even though Apex Legends will always remain a consistent and reliable money-making machine, if Respawn and EA really wanted to profit in the long run, they would take the time to work on new and more ambitious titles. And it looks like they are, with a Star Wars sequel in the works and a so-called Apex Legends single-player spin-off in development. I think this is a smart choice from the two developers, and if they were to release a Titanfall 3 in the future, I think it would sell very well, and there's a reason for that. If marketed properly, Titanfall 3 would attract a much larger audience this time around. Not only do you have the Titanfall community, who has been asking for a Titanfall 3 for years now, but you also have the Apex Legends community who you could easily appeal to considering that most of them now show interest in the Titanfall series. Plus, Respawn has gotten far more recognition in the past few years now, so if Titanfall 3 was announced, every game's news outlet would be spreading the word about Respawn's return to the Titanfall series. It would generate so much hype because so many more people know about Titanfall's significance now, and the role it played in shaping Respawn's legacy. The announcement of Titanfall 3 alone would spread like wildfire in the gaming community, and if marketed properly, Titanfall 3 can make more sales than the last two games ever did. I cannot understate this enough, if Respawn has a proper marketing campaign for Titanfall 3, they have the potential to attract millions of new players to this brand new entry in the series. You know, as long as it's not released in between two of the biggest gaming franchises of all time. But I think Respawn and EA have definitely learned from their past mistakes, considering Apex Legends came out at a time when no one was really expecting anything. So I am confident in Respawn's ability to market this game, and I think Titanfall 3 will sell very well. Still don't believe me? Fine. Do you know how many people are losing their minds over Armored Core right now, a game franchise that hasn't gotten a new entry in over 10 years? I'm sure many of us didn't even know what Armored Core was, I know I didn't, and yet From Software shook the entire gaming world with this announcement of Armored Core 6. Imagine if that was Titanfall 3 being announced. It's not like Titanfall fell off the radar like Armored Core, it's relevant and it's actively being talked about, and it has ties to one of the most popular Battle Royale games today. So if a game like Armored Core 6 is able to attract so much attention, I don't think Titanfall 3 will have any problems doing the same. I strongly believe that Titanfall 3 would be a worthwhile investment for Respawn and EA. It probably won't make as much money as Apex Legends, but at this point, what will? But Titanfall 3 is far from being a bad financial decision. As we have seen with games like Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Respawn can still profit off of these games that aren't a live service, and Titanfall 3 shouldn't be any different. Thank you for watching, and if you liked the content, don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, this is Agent Mav, signing off.